Audix Piano Miking Part 1 A simple setup and a visit with a pro. The acoustic grand piano is a very complex instrument capable of producing an extremely wide frequency response and expressive volume dynamics, powerful fundamentals, and delicate harmonics. Its sound is a blend of many factors, the hammers on the strings, the soundboard or harp, the resonance of the wood, the reflection of the piano lid, the room the piano is played in, and of course, the performer. Recording an accurate representation of a piano can be quite a challenge. There is no one way to record piano, but in this video we will show you a very simple way to get a great grand piano sound both in the studio and in live performance. And then we will introduce you to a professional studio audio engineer and learn his studio miking techniques using the Audix SCX25A large diaphragm microphone. Over the last year, we've been gathering pictures and videos from many professional front of house audio engineers with their mic placement strategies. And almost all of them use a spaced pair of large diaphragm microphones placed close to the strings about a foot or so from the hammers as you see in these images. The microphones are sometimes angled up to 45 degrees towards the lower strings. This technique is easy to set up and very secure. The mics won't move around or fall into the strings. Also, because of the relatively small size of the microphones, the lid can be placed at half stick, quarter stick, or closed altogether to help minimize stage bleed without worrying about damaging the mics or the piano. Using this simple technique, yields an evenly balanced, realistic stereo image of the piano that will work live or in the studio. Now let's check in with a studio professional. We visited Bob Stark at Kung Fu Bakery Recording Studios in Portland, Oregon to see how he mics up their grand piano. Bob Stark is an independent producer and recording engineer. Who This is pretty much your home base, right? 90% of the time I'd say this is where I'm at. They've got a beautiful Yamaha C7 Grand Piano. And Bob, you're going to show us how you mic it up, right? Correct. Going to feature a few Audix microphones and dive into it. And there's not just one way to mic up a Grand Piano, right? Oh, there's millions. It's, it's an unbelievable amount of trial that you could go through to get the sound on piano. But once you have it, it's awesome. This is your piano in the studio here. You work with it day in and day out. So you probably have one or two tried and true miking techniques to get a realistic stereo picture from the get-go. That's true. And I actually have um, one technique in particular that works well with this piano and translates to other pianos if you take the time to really listen to the piano and find some sweet spots and go for it. We'll be using a pair of Audix SCX25A large diaphragm condenser mics, which we'll be placing close to the piano. And then Bob has a unique technique involving Omni spaced pair microphones, and we'll be using a pair of the Audix TM1s for that. Let's see how you do it. Okay. Pretty much every piano I do, it's like I'll have piano player play. As I'm setting up the piano, I'll, I'll just listen, you know, really get my head down in there and listen. And eventually I'll find a spot that feels like it's really going to be a good stereo position in the piano. And ultimately, once I find it, I'll make a mark in the piano and know that eventually someday I'll be coming back to a piano. So it's like, you know, I'll just put a mark in it so I know where I like that piano at. The main thing that I'll start out with is a near coincident pair. Try to get these somewhere between 90 110 degrees in terms of angle. And on this piano, again, it's like I feel comfortable with where I'm in that 12 to 10 inch range above the harp. That's kind of the sweet spot on this piano, and it's going to be different on every piano. And the only way to really find it is to get in there and listen to it. Or have an assistant out here that'll move the mics around for you while you're in while the you other room. listen in the booth, right. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, your ears are generally a pretty good judge of what's good. And then the other mic I'll use, this is not so much to capture the room, but to kind of capture the warmth of the soundboard, I'll use an Omni pretty far, you know, three, four feet above the piano. And I'll typically spread these out pretty far. So I just want to give the piano a little bit more depth something more to work with when I'm working in stereo and a lot of times 
These mics will probably cancel out a little bit when you sum it to mono, but I, I kind of don't even want that depth when it goes to mono, so it works out just fine. Typically with piano, I don't do a lot of EQ until I get into mix world, and even then it's like hardly ever touch the piano with EQ. It's, and 90% of the time it's like, if it's in a rock track, I'm doing some high pass filtering to get it out, the low end of the piano out of the way of some other stuff. But from, you know, the lower mids of the piano on up, I leave it pretty much as I record it. The biggest secret is, is like you have to get in and listen to the piano. You, you have to do that. That's kind of the only way around finding what the piano sounds like. And, you know, stand in the room that you're recording the piano in and see what it sounds like in the room that you're recording in. Um, and then our job as, as producers, engineers, is to go back into the booth and make sure what we're hearing in there is a replication of what we're hearing out here. If it's not, then it's like, come back, move the mics around, and, and get to that point where everything sounds as it should. So to recap, Bob finds the sweet spot for the piano by removing the lid and carefully listening as the performer is playing the piano. Then he uses a near coincident pair of SCX 25A microphones about 10 to 12 inches above the soundboard or harp at this position. Then he'll use two small diaphragm condensers with omnidirectional polar patterns three to four feet above the piano in a very wide spaced pair to capture the warmth and depth of the piano. Thanks to Bob Stark and Kung Fu Bakery for showing us how they mic up their Yamaha C7 Grand Piano. Remember, there is never only one way to mic up an instrument. Take the time to listen carefully and experiment with microphone placement and polar patterns to find the sound that fits best within the context of the music you're recording. We recommend that you try these mic positions that we've shown you in this video as a starting point, and from there, it's up to you.